What's up everybody, today we're diving into another unit, being the combined arms unit in squad. This is the jack of all trades unit type, and it's something that we're all going to be a little familiar with, so let's talk about why. But first, hit the subscribe button, leave a like, and drop a comment down below with your thoughts, and let's get to it. So unsurprisingly, every faction has a combined arms unit, and obviously this could change as OWI continues to update units and how they operate in game. But with the combined arm units, you're going to get a very balanced unit type across the board. They're not going to really feature anything that distinct. In fact, they're going to be what you're used to because this mostly resembles what we had before the voting system was in place. So normally I would point out some things or features that make this pretty unique, but the combined arms unit is pretty straightforward. Most factions will get one MBT on a 15 minute timer or multiple mobile gun systems. You also have a mix of IFVs or multiple IFVs to go along with your tanks and a decent mix of transports, logistics vehicles, and light vehicles added in there. Factions with helicopters will have two helicopters with a six minute respawn timer. And there's nothing unique about the emplacements that you can put down. It's all pretty much what you've come to expect from squad. There's not some significant weakness to the unit either, but the matchups made in the unit voting system could create some mismatches especially when factoring in the map vote. Like with Air Assault, you have multiple ATGMs, three helicopters, but you lack an armor. So there's a positive and a negative attached to that unit type. Armored, you may lack speed because you don't have a bunch of light vehicles, but you do have multiple tanks or mobile gun systems. So you have to look at this unit as to what the enemy might be choosing based on the map. For example, if you're on Talil outskirts, you might want to lean into the armored unit type over picking the combined armed unit type just to have more tanks on the field. Or maybe you're on a map like Scorpo, Lashkar Valley, where an extra helicopter would pay dividends along with the ability to put extra AT gyms down, meaning the air assault unit might be the better choice. And frankly, the map choice for combined arms and where they're going to be effective isn't too limited. I mean, this is going to fit most of your standard squad maps. Like you'll probably be fine running this unit on Yerifka, Gorodok, or Goose Bay. You could even make the argument that this still fits urban city maps like Mudahar or Narva. I think selecting the combined arms unit really comes down to what you might predict the enemy's choice is going to be and how you best counter that. And it also may just depend on what lobby or public server you're in. Because let's be honest, sometimes we just know that our team might need the combined arms unit over something like Air Assault just because of how previous rounds have gone. Now, I've already said that every faction gets a combined arms unit, but let's talk a little bit about what that includes. Now, keep in mind that every faction will have access to boats if necessary, and your emplacements are pretty standard across the board. Just remember that the IMF has a discounted price for HABs, and insurgents obviously get two HABs per FOB. But starting with Blue 4 factions, we have the Australian Defense Forces 3rd Brigade Battle Group. And with this unit, you'll get up to three transports, two full-size lodges, two PMVs, one PMV RWS, three ASLAVs, one M1A1 Abrams tank, and two helicopters. Next, we have the British Armed Forces, 3rd Division Battle Group. They'll come with up to three transports, two lodges, one LPPV, one LPP WRS, and some pretty heavy armor with four warriors. However, only two of those are up armored. And of course, one Challenger tank and two helicopters. Next, we have the Canadian Armed Forces and the 1st Canadian Mechanized Brigade Group. They'll operate up to three transports, two full-size logistics vehicles, two Love WC6s, and note, that's not the 50 cal, as well as one TAP VC6, which is also not a 50 cal. They also have one Coyote and two LEV6s, along with their Leopard and two helicopters. Next, we have the U.S. Army's 3rd Brigade Combat Team, 1st Infantry Division which will operate up to three transports, two full-size lodges. They'll have three Mat Vs, all with a 50 caliber machine gun, and one of those will be a Crows. They'll also have two Strikers and one Bradley. And of course, they'll have an M1A2 Abrams and two helicopters. Now we have the U.S. Marine Corps' 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit. The U.S. Marine Corps will have up to three transports, only one full-size lodge, but they will get two armored lodges with the AAVCs which are also amphibious. They'll also get two Hummers, which have 50 cals on top, two AAVPs and three LEV-25s, one M1A1 Abrams and two helicopters. For the irregular militia, you'll have the irregular battle group, which will operate up to three full-size transports. They'll get up to three bikes, two full-size lodges, one armored lodgy and one technical lodgy. 
They'll also get one armored technical Lodgy, one armored technical Dishka, one technical SPG, nine, two BMP ones, and one BMP two, which does not include an ATGM on board. They'll get two mobile anti-air guns, one of which will be an MTLB zoo, and then finally they'll have the BM-21 Grad along with a T-62, but no helicopter. The insurgents will also operate the irregular battle group. They'll operate up to three transports, three motorcycles, three full-size lodgies, two modern technical lodgies, one modern technical Dishka, one Humvee Dishka, one BRDM-2, MTLB PKT, three BMP-1s, one modern technical UB-32, rocket truck, and two Zoo-23 anti-air trucks and of course, one T-62. The Middle Eastern Alliance will have the 1st Battalion Legion of Babylon. They'll operate up to three transports, two full-size lodgies, two Samir lodgies with a bunch of speed, three Samir cords, one BRDM-2, one BMP-1, and two BMP-2s. They'll also get a T-72S along with two helicopters. The Turkish Land Forces will have the 1st Army Battle Group. As expected, they'll have up to three full-size transports, two full-size lodgies, two Cobras, one of which will be an RWS, but they'll both be 50 cal. They'll get two ACV-15s and two PARS M250 cals, along with one M60T main battle tank and two helicopters. The PLA will have the 118th Combined Arms Brigade. They'll operate three gun-mounted transports, two full-size lodgies, three CSKs, one of which will be an RWS, two ZBLs, one ZBD, one ZTZ, and two helicopters. The PLA ground forces have the 14th Amphibious Combined Arms Brigade, which will have three armed transports, one full-size Lodgy, and two armored tracked Lodgies, which are also amphibious along with the two ZSD APCs. They'll also get two ZBDs, one ZTD mobile gun system, one ZTZ, and two helicopters. The PLA Marine Corps will have the 5th Marine Combined Arms Brigade. They'll operate three armed Lodgies, one full-size Lodgy, and two armored tracked ZSD Lodgies. They'll also have one ZSD APC, two ZBD 05s, and three ZTD mobile gun systems. No actual tank to go along with this faction, but they will get two helicopters. The Russian ground forces will have the 49th Combined Arms Army. They'll have up to three transports, two full-size Lodgies, two Tigers, and one Tiger RWS, two BTR-82s, and one BMP-2. They'll get one T-72 along with two helicopters. The VDV will have the 7th Guards Mountain Air Assault Division. They'll have three transports, three BTRDG armored lodges that are tracked, one BTRD cord, one BTRZD, one BTR MDM, two BMD fours, one Sprut, and one T-72, along with two helicopters. So now you have the names of the units, which is important when you're voting because that's what they're going to show up as. And you also have some idea of what vehicles to expect with each unit. So while it may be a rather simple unit to use with no significant perks, I think it's important to remember that this could be the base faction that you could pick if the other options just aren't really adding up to a good experience. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of the combined arms faction. I'm doing videos on all the different unit types, so if you haven't checked out the playlist, be sure to do so so you can get up to speed on other unit types and what they're capable of. And of course, hit the subscribe button so you can be up to date on new videos. Leave a like on the video and leave a comment down below with what your favorite unit type is. And I'll see you next time.